These are the 13 and 15 inch M2 MacBook Airs. And while the screen size is the most distinguishable difference between the two, there are a few other important areas where they differ from each other. Beyond the variation in both design and internal components that you find in any configuration of these models, the ones that I have here are completely different configurations, one being the base model and the other one with bumped up RAM and more storage. My goal here today is to highlight the differences between the 13 and 15 inch models, both specs wise and from a practical standpoint. And really push these machines in some different areas to find out when it makes sense to grab the base model or spend a little more and bump up your specs a little bit. So if you're interested in the M2 MacBook Air and you want to know more about all these little details, stick around and let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. I've had the 13 inch MacBook Air since launch and I've used it a ton over the last year or so and it's been a fantastic little machine. It's been my favorite MacBook over the last couple of years. I think I've been pretty vocal about that. So when the 15 inch model was announced, I wanted to pick it up not only because of how much I enjoyed the smaller version, but also because the way that I use my MacBook has changed quite a bit. When I bought the 13 inch model last year, I was using it for all my work. So making these videos, coding, some 3D modeling, photo editing, and so on. And knowing those are going to be my use cases, I bumped up the specs when I purchased it to make sure that I was going to have enough power to do all those things. Now that I've moved most of my work over to a Mac Studio, I'm not really doing any heavy lifting on my laptop. It's mostly productivity based stuff, watching content and some lighter creative work. When I grabbed the 15 inch, I knew that the base model would satisfy those needs. And for fun, I also wanted to see just how far you can push it because I think it can be extremely helpful for other people in determining which machine might be right for them. There's a lot of discord course and conversation about what you can actually do with these, but not a whole lot of tangible information. So I kind of want to address that. So with that said, let's just get into what's packed inside these little guys. The 15 inch base model comes with an eight core CPU and 10 core GPU, eight gigs of unified memory and 256 gigs of internal storage. And it's priced at $1299. So $200 more than the 13 inch base model. The 13 inch model that I have here is a little more powerful, same M2 chip, but the RAM is bumped up to 16 gigs as is the the SSD with 512 gigabytes versus the base 256. And this configuration will run you $1,599. I do want to call out one important detail with that. This 15 inch base model does have two more GPU cores than the base 13 inch version, meaning that this is going to perform a little bit better with graphically related tasks. And if you bump up the 13 inch model to match the CPU, it's only $100 difference, so really you're only paying an extra 100 bucks for the bigger display. In regards to screen sizes, the 13 inch version is technically 13.6 and the 15 is 15.3. So realistically, we're looking at an actual difference of 1.7 inches. And I just wanna highlight what that disparity actually looks like in the real world. I do find that the 15 inch feels a lot bigger, but just in terms of how I use my machine, for most things, it likely won't change that much in terms of solving any pain points that I have in terms of screen size, but that's likely gonna be different different for everyone. I think for people working in tools like Xcode, where you got a lot of frames or windows within an application, you can feel that space a little more. And it does give you some more breathing room with toolbars and menus. But again, whether or not you care about all of that stuff is going to be highly subjective. When it comes to the actual display specs, these are pretty much identical, both 500 nits brightness, same color specs with P3 wide color. I even threw my colorimeter on these and they're virtually identical. There's actually just above 500 nits brightness on both with a contrast ratio of 1400 to one, give or take, and anything above 1200 to one on an IPS panel like this is outstanding. Having said that, I do think the 15 inch is much nicer for watching content, which I've done a fair amount of while traveling. You obviously get a larger picture, but the big difference between the two is sound quality. This is where there's the most disparity between these two machines, in my opinion. The 13 inch M2 Air has stereo speakers with high dynamic range, and don't get me wrong, those sound better than your average laptop for sure. But the 15 inch Air comes packed with a six speaker sound system with force canceling woofers, and the difference is instantly noticeable. The 15 inch speakers are a lot more full sounding with deeper bass, better clarity, and get a lot louder as well. I generally don't like to show comparisons in terms of audio quality on the channel because it is subject to the viewer speakers, but I think it's worth noting here because you can definitely notice a difference. As you can tell, there is quite a contrast in audio, which I think makes sense given that one has a much larger chassis to work with. That larger chassis also has an effect on performance as well. The M2 Air is a fanless design, so all of the heat that's generated is dissipated through the chassis itself. And this is one area that I was really curious about. Because the 15 inch model gives you a larger area to spread the heat out to, I thought that it could potentially work 
a little bit better. And this is in fact the case specifically with GPU related tasks where you can actually see about a 15% difference in performance over long stretches, depending on what you're doing. CPU related tasks I found to be a little bit better as well, but there's not much disparity there. Likely something that you're not gonna notice, but for those that worry a lot about heat with the M2 Airs, the 15 inch model does seem to be a little bit more functional in that sense and stay just a fraction cooler. Honestly though, for as much concern as there is about heat on the M2 MacBook Air, I've never had any real issues with it on either of these models and I've put in plenty of hours specifically on the 13 inch model. That's really gonna be the only factor where you might see any difference in how these chips behave, which is largely based on the design, but ignoring both designs or sizes for a second, let's talk about this from a real world perspective. Like when does it make sense to get the base model and at what point do you start bumping up the specs? Well, this base model is gonna be fine for the majority of people. If you're just using this for productivity or using office software, there's absolutely no issues whatsoever. I say the only time that you can see some slowness in that regard is if you have a ton of browser windows open and you're in a video chat where you can see the system working a little more, but really even there, it's mostly fine. If you move into creative workflows, you can still do a surprising amount. I've been able to do graphic design, some lighter video editing and editing photos on here. The one thing that I'll say with any of these and frankly, most apps that use more resources is you're probably gonna wanna run only one at a time. Otherwise, it's fairly easy to run into system memory issues. The Affinity Suite seems to use less resources than Adobe apps like Lightroom or Photoshop. Those are still usable. Again, they can slow down if you have a bunch of stuff open at once and you will see memory swapping kick in a lot more there. For those who aren't familiar with how memory swapping works, it's essentially Mac OS borrowing space from your SSD storage to keep up with the current memory demands. So the more you push these base machines, the more that will get used. Some folks really try and avoid that because of added mileage to the SSD and it does put a lot more pressure on your system. But regardless of that, it does technically handle handle a lot of these higher RAM situations as long as it's not too high. And you can actually do quite a lot with these base machines. When I get into video editing, as soon as I start playing around in here, it starts really pulling down my memory. I can still do basic editing in Final Cut Pro, even stack clips here and there. So if I am just getting started out or I just wanna do something really simple, this can technically still handle it. But if you start using more demanding effects or titles, you're probably gonna see a lot more slowness and you may actually find you get out of memory issues. If you're doing software development, as long as you're using this in more of a casual manner, you can do quite a bit with a base model. Basic web and mobile development work just fine. I can be in VS Code and spin up a Next.js project without any issues and things work all right in Xcode as well. Just be aware that with Xcode, you do have to keep things fairly simple as it doesn't take much to get up to that eight gigs of memory. I think you could still use this machine to learn some iOS development, but I don't think that I attempt to build production apps from it. It's a similar story with Android Studio. It uses a substantial amount of resources just on a basic project. And if you ever did want to spin up an emulator on here with a more advanced project, you're likely gonna have a bad time. So I would say in regards to pretty much anything with creative or development workflows, you can use a base model in more of a casual manner. You can push it pretty far with some of those tasks, but it really does put a lot of strain on your system. The bottleneck there is almost always gonna be the memory. If that's at 16 gigs or higher, you can run pretty much anything as long as it doesn't use too much storage. In regards to storage, just a note that the 256 gig drives are considerably slower than the ones above it, which are about twice as fast, but Again, with most things, you're likely not gonna notice that much. In the past, I've run both an M1 MacBook Air and an M1 Mac Mini with 16 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD as my main machines, and storage was something that I always needed to be aware of. When I was working as a full-time iOS developer, I'd always have to keep my eye on the derived data folder. That can eat up a lot of your space because it can fill up pretty quickly if you're working as a full-time dev, and with content, I always needed an external SSD. I'd say that if you really wanna bump things up beyond the base model, and you're looking at more resource heavy stuff, I'd probably start with at least the same configuration as what's in this 13 inch M2 Air with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. It'll just give you a little bit more breathing room with storage capacity and you won't have to worry about managing it as much, but if you're really on a budget, 256 can do in a pinch. With the 16 and 512 gig system, this is all you'll need for most software development workflows outside of use with virtual machines and things of that nature. 
nature. It'll run almost everything as it relates to photo and video editing, motion graphics, and it will allow you to play around with some basic 3D modeling as well. I ran this configuration for almost a full year and never had any issues. The only time that I felt any slowness was when I was editing some pretty demanding videos and in Blender, everything would still work totally fine. It would just be a little slow at times. I would occasionally run into memory issues trying to do too much, say if I had a timeline open for one of these videos and I was in Lightroom and doing some more in the background. But as long as you're aware of what you've got open and keep that in check, this is usually gonna work with most of these use cases. If you want even more power, you can hop into the M2 Pro machines, but that's a topic for another video. I did do a video comparing the Pro and Air earlier this year, which I'll link below, but I hope this gives you a general idea of what you can expect with these machines. The best part about these M series chips outside of how powerful they are is just how efficient everything is. In terms of battery life, like any other Apple Silicon machine, both of these are absolutely amazing in that regard. Both are advertised to give you 18 hours battery life, but just keep in mind that's in ideal conditions. So you're likely not gonna see that much use on a single charge, but it will last you a full work day and then some most of the time. The only time that I've seen these errors eat battery is when I spin up usage with 3D modeling or something that is deliberately running these at high usage for an extended period of time. Then you can see the battery life pull down in three or four hours in extreme cases, but that's really the only instance where on a full charge, you probably won't make it through an eight hour workday. I do feel like the 15 inch battery life might actually last a little bit longer as well, just from my own personal usage and my experience with the 13 over the last year, but I don't really wanna pit them against each other head to head as it might not be the most accurate representation with the 13 having quite a few more battery cycles with me using it over the last few years over the 15. These both have phenomenal standby time. If you're traveling with them and using them lightly, these can last you days on a single charge and you just can't beat these in terms of portability. The 13 inch is obviously a little easier to pack around as it is smaller and it only weighs 2.7 pounds, but the 15 inch is still so much nicer to cart around with you than the 16 inch Pro in terms of bulkiness and weight. It's only 3.3 pounds and I know it might not seem like that much of a difference compared to the 16 inch Pro at 4.7, but you can definitely notice it the longer that you pack it around with you. As far as connectivity goes, both the 13 and 15 inch M2 Airs are the same. The two USB-C Thunderbolt ports, in my opinion, they could have probably added another two on the 15 with a bigger size, but it is the same nonetheless. You're likely gonna need some kind of hub if you do have a lot of wired accessories, but I do think with the Air, Apple is more so counting on folks using a lot of wireless gear. On the wireless side, you have Bluetooth 5.3 and Wi-Fi 6. I've been a huge fan of Wi-Fi 6E that's in the M2 Pro and Max models as they are faster than these Wi-Fi 6 options. But in order to actually utilize that, you'll need a Wi-Fi 6E network and at least a gigabit network connection. So again, for most people, they probably won't notice the disparity there either. I've had zero issues with Wi-Fi. It's been super fast and Bluetooth has also been fantastic. There's been no drops in connection or no issues with Bluetooth packets at all. When it comes down to it, both of these M2 MacBook Airs are great machines. They do offer mostly the same performance with a slight advantage because of the heat dissipation on the 15 inch. That model does have better audio quality, but other than that, almost everything else comes down to personal preference and the configuration that you choose. The base model is still more than capable in most areas, but if you do want a bit more juice and you have a more demanding workflow, an upgraded Air can keep up with almost everyone's needs. With that in mind, if you have a MacBook Air, let me know in the comments down below what your config looks like and what you use it for and how you're liking it. I always love hearing about other folks' experiences. It's not only cool to see how you guys are using your machines, but it also helps me understand what I can look into personally and how I can provide value in these videos. That's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to support this channel, see more tech-related content, or take turns reciting the alphabet backwards as fast as possible, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next upload.